So in this video, we're going to discuss tensors in one dimension in PyTorch. And if you're familiar with NumPy, this video should go by pretty fast. First, we'll cover the basics. And just a note, no in-place operations. These are pretty popular in PyTorch, uh, but they can lead to some difficulties down the road. We'll talk about data types, indexing and slicing, and basic operations in PyTorch. And we'll finish it off with universal functions. Just like NumPy, we can import Torch and cast the following lints to the tensor A. And just a note, all the elements within a tensor have to be the same data type. And the indexing is as follows. And we can access the first, second, third element using the standard square brackets. So this table summarizes the actual data contained within the tensor and the tensor type. We have this tensor, which contains all integers. And the data contained within the tensor is a 64-bit integer. And the actual tensor type is a long tensor. In this case, we have real numbers. And the actual type of data stored within the tensor is a, a float of 32 bits. And the actual type of tensor is a float tensor. So we can actually select the type of tensor we'd like to, to cast the values to. And in this case, we have the method float tensor. And this will cast the integers into a float. And we can verify that using the type method. And we get a float tensor. We can also change the type of the tensor. And we use the method type. And then the argument is the type of tensor we'd like to, to cast it to. And in this case, it's a float tensor. So the type of A will be float tensor. We can also find the size of the tensor. And in this case, it's 5. And the number of dimensions are 1. So another thing we can do is reshape a tensor. So in this case, the tensor is basically one element long. And we can convert it to a column tensor by using the command view. And it's helpful to visualize it as a column. And just to note, we can use this, the argument negative 1 if we don't know the actual size of the tensor. And that will become clear in the next example. So in this case, we have six elements. And we simply, instead of putting a 6, we put a negative 1. And we don't have to really worry about the size of the tensor. And this will come in handy throughout the course. So we can cast a NumPy array to a tensor very simply in PyTorch. And we use the function from NumPy. And this will cast NumPy underscore array to torch.tensor. And we can convert it back by using the method dot NumPy. And just a note, we have the NumPy array, the torch tensor, and the variable we casted back. And back to NumPy is actually pointing to torch tensor. And torch tensor is actually pointing to NumPy array. So in the lab, you'll see what happens to torch tensor if you change NumPy array. And you'll also see what happens to back to NumPy array. And the process for converting a pandas series is pretty similar. You just do it as follows. And the attribute dot values in the panda series will actually return a NumPy array. And then from NumPy in the torch library, we'll convert it to a torch tensor. So let's go over some basic indexing and slicing operations. So we have the following tensor. And we can change the first element of the tensor to 100 as follows. And the result is a 100 instead of a 20. We can change the fifth element of the tensor as follows. And now it's a 0 instead of a 4. We can also change multiple indexes. Considering the following tensor with the following indexes, we can also use slicing. Consider the tensor C with the following indexes. And we can sign the indexes 1, 2, and 3 from tensor C to tensor D as follows. And D contains elements 1, 2, and 3 of the tensor C. Also assign the tensors 300 and 400 as follows. Four, and now the values change accordingly. Now let's go over some basic operations with PyTorch tensors. And basically, tensors behave a lot like vectors. So we can perform vector addition and subtraction. So we have the tensor u and the tensor v. And when we add them, the first element of z corresponds to the addition of the first element in u and v. And the same thing applies to the second element. And we get the following result. So in PyTorch, we create the following tensors, u and v. And we simply add them. And it's identical to vector addition. We can also multiply tensors with a scalar. And it's identical to multiplying a vector with a scalar. So we, we have our tensor y. 
and we have our new tensor Z, which is simply Y multiplied by 2. And we simply multiply every element in the tensor Y by the number 2. It's pretty simple. Then PyTorch, we create the tensor Y, we multiply it by 2, and then we assign it to the tensor Z. And every element in the tensor is multiplied by 2. Now the product of two tensors is pretty different. So we have tensor U and V, and tensor Z is simply the product of U and V. And I know you're going to kill me for the pronunciation, but it's the har har Harmonod product. Sorry if I mangled that. And the first element of Z corresponds to the first element of U multiplied by the first element of V. And same for the second element, and we get the following results. So we define a tensor U and a tensor V as follows. We simply multiply them, and the result is a product. Now another really popular operation is a dot product. So we have the tensor U and the tensor V. And the dot product is defined as follows. And we take the first element of tensor U and tensor V and multiply it together. Then we add the product of the second element of tensor U and the second element of tensor V. And we get our result. And of course, this extends to an arbitrary number of dimensions. So just to note, um, in a lot of the course, I just wrote it like this. And this just makes things a little easier for if you're a beginner. So in PyTorch, we use the torch function dot dot, and that will produce the dot product. So we can add a constant term to a tensor. And this is called broadcasting. So we have the tensor u, and we add 1 and assign it to tensor z. And this will as simply add 1 to every element in the tensor. And this can get pretty complex. Uh, so in the notebook, I included a link uh, to a cool tutorial for NumPy, and hopefully that'll help out. Finally, let's go over some universal functions. So we can apply basic operations to a tensor. So we can calculate the mean of a tensor. And that's basically the average. We can al also find the maximum element. In this case, it's 5. Now let's go over some universal functions. So we'll use the numpy.py to create LM of pi. We'll create a torch tensor as follows. And then we can apply the sine function to every element in the tensor and assign it to y. And symbolically, it looks something like that. And that's our final result. Another useful function we can use is line space. So what this does is it creates a sequence of numbers starting from negative 2 and ending at 2. And there'll be five samples. And in this case, the actual increment between samples is 1. And here's another case. We'll, we'll create nine samples. And the, because there's more samples, the actual increment between samples will be 0 0.5. So just like PyTorch, we can plot mathematical functions. We'll use a function line space. We'll apply the function sign to every element of the tensor and assign it to the tensor y. And we can even use matplotlib. And depending if you're using Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Labs, you'll have to use the inline function. And all we do, we cast it to a NumPy array using the method.numpy, and similar for the element y. And that's it. So now let's go on to 2D tensors.